Okay, Assalamualaikum and good day student. The continuity of uh, lecture 15, still in chapter 4. We will do uh, another two uh, tutorial over here. So the first uh, question is still related to the uh, chapter 4, which is uh, rotating about a fixed axis. Let's say um, there is a disc about 30 kilogram. So supported at the center over here, that is a pin. Okay. Start from rest. So the given the external forces, uh, the disc is red with a cord, and then the cord is being uh, applied by uh, external forces about 10 newton, pulling downwards. So pulling downwards, and then at the same time, uh, there is a moment acting clockwise about a uh, 5 newton meter so given the uh, radius over here and then of course there will be a uh, angular acceleration acting to the uh, disc but happen at the disc so what you need to do is you need to find when is the uh, how much how much what is the number of revolution okay. how, uh, what is the number of revolution so the disc must take to attain uh, 20 radian per second yeah? to attain omega at uh, 20 radian per second and then what is the reaction at the pin reaction at the pins mean reaction at this uh, what is the force acting at this point over okay um, from this uh, free body diagram uh, it's clearly that from the mass of uh, 30 kilogram there will be a force acting downwards because uh, 30 times 9.81 is equal to 294.3 then uh, at this pin so you, you need to uh, to predict that there must be a uh, forces acting to the uh, x as is which is f o x and then uh, prediction of force acting at a uh, y axis so the another external forces is uh, force acting downward at the cord then uh, newton so this is the uh, direction of the angular acceleration okay uh, what is the moment of initial uh, of the disc acting at the pin over here from from the uh, formula that you know if this is a disc and then this is uh, like say z z at this so the, the disc is rotating at this direction so you know that the mass moment of inertia at z z at this is equal to half of uh, m r squared so knowing the formula and then uh, substitute the mass with uh, 30 kilo and then the, the uh, radius about 0 0.2 you will reveal the initial at initial of the disc at point O rotation at point O is uh, 0 0.6 kilogram meter square so this one you don't know what is the amount this one you don't know what is the amount and then this is so you don't know what is the amount so let's find the uh, variables the unknown uh, parameter from the equation of motion eh, from the equation of motion uh, we can reveal that uh, the total oops sorry the total force at y as is at x as is is equal to m a x and then you know that the uh, force acting at x as this is this one f o x so meaning that the only forces acting at point x is f o x and then m times there is no uh, acceleration occur at x as this so this is zero so you know that f o x is actually zero return and then the second equation the second uh, equation of motion is at the y as is 
m a y so the force acting at y axis is this one f o y and weight so what we will have here is actually f o y minus w weight of the disc minus the external forces at the cock is equal to m and then there is no acceleration occurred at point at, at y axis so there is zero f o y minus the weight 294.3 minus the external forces which is 10 equal to zero so it will reveal the uh, force acting at pin at y axis is actually equal to 304.3 newton okay now the third equation of motion you can relate with the uh, total moment uh, occurred at uh, taking the point at point O is actually equal to moment of inertia at point O times the angular acceleration of the this from uh, from the equation over here you know that the moment the total moment over here first there is uh, this one because there is external uh, it happens there is a moment acting at this about 5 newton per 5 newton meter in clockwise direction and then due to the external forces over here times the radius of the uh, this 0 0.2 it will create a moment acting at clockwise direction so total moment at point O is first the 5 uh, meter meter plus moment created from the external forces at the cord which is uh, 10 newton times 0 0.2 yeah, is equal to i moment initial occurred at uh, point o just now uh, you know that just now i o is equal to 0 0.6 uh, kilogram meter square so i o is 0 0.6 times uh, alpha yeah. from there uh, alpha is uh, actually 11.7 radian per second square so now you already know all the three parameter f o x f o y and the angular acceleration okay now uh, now you need to know what is the uh, total number of revolution uh, number of revolution how much to to attain the uh, angular velocity of 20 radian per second at what uh, degree at what uh, how, how many revolution did this need to attain uh, angular velocity at 20 radian per second from the kinematic uh, relationship you know that the equation of uh, v squared is actually equal to v initial squared plus 2 a s so this is a rectilinear equation so when you convert it to to uh, curvilinear you will notice that the v will, will be replaced with uh, omega and then uh, this is omega initial squared plus 2 alpha 
So S will be replaced with a, a theta. So this is uh, 20 radian per second. So this is 20 radian per second. And then the initial uh, angular velocity is start from rest. So this one is zero. And then two alpha just now you reveal as uh, 11.7 radian second squared and then theta so from this uh, equation uh, what you will have is theta is actually equal to 70.1 radian so this is in in radian you know that uh, pi is actually equal to uh, 180 uh, degree yeah? meaning that uh, if 17.1 radian so simply change that one and then uh, you will get uh, actually uh, two to get Omega at uh, 20 radian per second. So the disk need to rotate about uh, 2.72 revolution. Yeah. You need to, uh, the disk need to rotate about 2.72 uh, revolution in order to get the angular velocity about 20 uh, radian per second. Okay. Okay, this is another example, example four uh, in translation. Uh, this airplane weighted uh, the mass is about uh, two hundred and fifty thousand kilogram, and then given the thrust, the thrust force during takeoff is seven hundred kilonewton. So the uh, the total thrust the, the total thrust force acting at this direction is seven hundred kilonewton. Um, so the question is asking you to find the acceleration of the airplane, and then what is the normal forces at this point, point A, and point B. So find the acceleration and normal force at NA and NB. Okay. The equation of motion that uh, that we'll, we will use is that uh, first you know that this is the thrust force acting over here and then you know the distance between this is the center of gravity you know the dimension from this is NA this is NB this is the distance between center of gravity to NB and then given the uh, dimension about from the ground to the center to the thrust force is about three meter and then from thrust force to the center of gravity is two meter um, you can use the equation of motion of um, sum of forces acting at x as is is equal to m a x so you know that the only forces acting at x as is, like say this is uh, x as is, this is y as is, the only forces acting at x as is, is the thrust force, which is equal to mass of the airplane times the acceleration of the airplane, which is uh, 700 uh, newton equal to mass 250 
thousand times AX. From there, definitely you can reveal the acceleration of the airplane is equal to 2.8 meter per second squared. Okay, to reveal the normal force acting at A and NB, again the equation of motion at Y axis must follow this uh, second Newton of law, which is uh, we know that the the airplane have a weight, yeah, have a weight about two two hundred and fifty thousand times one, and then there is uh, normal acceleration acceleration. Uh, sorry, normal force acting uh, at point A and normal force acting at point B. So. Uh, I can point it out as a Na plus Nb minus W which is equal to M. There is no acceleration occurred at uh, Y axis. Huh? At Y axis, so acceleration at Y is equal to 0. From this equation, so we know that Na plus and B is equal to 200, 250,000 times 9.81 so this is equation number one uh, from the equation of motion taking the, the sum of moment acting at center of gravity is here uh, must equal to zero uh, why zero because a uh, plane is moving uh, in still in the ground there is no uh, rotation uh, occurred then uh, what we will have here is number one T the truss so the truss force truss force and then what is the radius from the center of gravity is 2 meter due to the thrust force they will have a moment acting anti-clockwise direction so T times 2 meter uh, plus NB uh, due to normal force acting at point B and B with a radius or distance about 22 meter okay, it will create a moment at anti-clockwise direction so times 22 minus NA so NA times the distance from point of acting NA to the center of gravity about 5 meter then the moment will acting in clockwise direction so it is negative so this is 5 is equal to 0 uh, this is equation number 2 solving equation number 1 and number 2 uh, taking the T is about uh, 700 kilonewton just now so we will reveal that Na is equal to 2050 kilonewton NB is uh, 402 kilonewton okay that's all Thank you very much.